So we're talking about white wine before, the white grape juice being a good substitute. And here's a substitute for red wine. Red grape juice. Seriously, it really does taste like red wine. That was a clip from one of Freely's recent vlogs. And if you're wondering what in the hell is biodynamic, uh, then you should find this video very interesting. Biodynamic farming is seen as the more organic than organic method of sustainable farming. It is not. Biodynamics is the method of farming proposed by occultist Rudolf Steiner, who created the crypto-religious movement of anthroposophy based on his clairvoyant visions and a racist view of human development, reincarnation, karma, astrology, homeopathy, and gnomes. That was from the article, Is Biodynamic Farming Vegan? over at quackometer.net. And as we will soon see, no, <laughs> no, it's not vegan. Um, although to be fair, there's no way that Freely could have known this unless she had some prior knowledge of biodynamic farming, which I'm sure that she didn't, otherwise she would not have bought this grape juice. Uh, according to the label on the grape juice that you can see in the clip, it says, our biodynamic vines are non-GMO, grown, I think is what it says, grown without chemicals, herbicides, or pesticides, Robinvale vines care about your health and the environment, no preservatives added. So this just basically sounds like organic, right? It just sounds like another word for organic. Um, there's no way that Freely could have known from this that biodynamic farming is actually pseudoscience and pseudoscience of the worst kind, the kind that harms, unnecessarily harms sentient beings. Organic. I've touched on organic agriculture before in a few different videos and how it supports animal agriculture, um, namely because organic farming cannot utilize synthetic fertilizer. It must use um, natural fertilizer, so basically manure from animals um, and even, you know, ground up blood and bones and feathers from slaughtered animals uh, and sometimes even whole fish ground up. This support of animal agriculture by buying the, the products and byproducts is not only morally problematic for vegans due to, uh, you know, obviously animal concerns and environmental concerns, uh, it's also just really filthy and dangerous. These animal substances carry a number of animal pathogens, both bacterial and viral, that can affect humans as well. They can even introduce prions into the food supply, think like mad cow disease, which is a fatal disease with no cure uh, that cannot be destroyed by cooking. Given the availability and affordability of conventional agriculture that uses clean synthetic nitrate fertilizers, there's no reason to choose organic. Remember, organic is not pesticide free, nor is it likely to be nutritionally superior. However, avoiding organic is not always possible nor practicable, and at least these animal inputs have some purpose when they are used as fertilizers. Uh, the same cannot be said for biodynamic. It is on a whole nother level. It causes all of the harm of organic and then some. Biodynamic preparations. Aside from meeting the requirements for organic certification as a base, biodynamic certification also requires the use of various preparations, including Preparation 500, cow manure is buried in a cow horn and allowed to ferment. Preparation 502, yarrow flowers are buried in a stag's bladder. Preparation 505, oak bark is buried in the skull of a farm animal. Preparation 506, dandelion flowers are buried in a cow mysentery or the peritoneum. It's uh, something to do with the stomach. Of the nine biodynamic preparations, some of which use manure, all of which are bullshit, only three do not use animal products. Think this has some practical purpose? That there's actually a reason for taking manure or flowers and burying it in a cow horn or a deer's bladder? The cow has horns in order to reflect inwards the astral and etheric formative forces, which then penetrate right into the metabolic system, so that increased activity in the digestive organism arises by reason of this radiation from horns and hoofs. So unlike organic fertilizers, this is not based on any sort of evidence of efficacy or even real-world physics. Uh, it's not even based on like some sort of weird traditional practice, like traditional Chinese medicine or something like that. Uh, it's literally just based on the ravings of a racist, esoteric lunatic. If this were a book, that would be really hilarious, but it's real life, so, uh, it's not. Pest management or, uh, animal sacrifice. So, how does a biodynamic farmer manage pests? Well, homeopathically, of course. 
Although biodynamic farming covers both livestock and agricultural practice, use of animal products on plants happens in quite a bizarre way. Steiner was heavily influenced by that other barn pot, the German doctor who invented homeopathy, Samuel Hahnemann. Homeopathy states that like cures like. A poison that can give you a headache can cure a headache if given in microscopic or even non-existent doses. Steiner adapted this to getting rid of disease on the farm. By sacrificing and burning pests and then adding them to the fields, you can eliminate everything from slugs to mice. So based on what I have read, this means that they, they catch the animals and then in this elaborate ritual based on planetary alignments, because of course, uh, they either burn them or drown them and crush them, uh, and then either sprinkle the remains or spray them over the field. That doesn't sound very vegan to me, especially since there is no reason to do it other than to satisfy some cultish delusion. You know, pest control is a difficult subject, even at the best of times, but something like this that is overtly cruel and not even useful is just completely inexcusable. To be fair, it's unclear whether or not this part of biodynamic farming is actually being practiced and promoted by biodynamic farmers. I could find no mention of it in the uh, Demeter Association's biodynamic certification guidelines, no mention of mice or slugs or burning or drowning them or any other pests. However, do we really want to take that chance? You know, as batshit stupid as this practice is and as its creator was, you know, do we actually know exactly what these farmers are up to? You know, maybe some of them are burning mice and harvesting plants based on the position of the moon relative to the fucking whatever. Maybe others aren't. So after recording this video, I found something rather interesting. If you look in the Australian uh, biodynamic certification guidelines, this is what the Robin Vale grape juice that Freely was drinking is actually certified under. Uh, on page 19, under plant protection and standards, it says pests, diseases, and weeds must be controlled by any combination of the following, followed by a uh, bullet point list. And the fourth one is rather interesting. It says specific biodynamic measures. Okay, that sounds rather vague, but could definitely entail the mouse burning, slug burning, drowning, sprinkling over the fields shit, right? So uh, I looked a little bit more and I found something a little bit less vague on page, what page? I think it was 33. Yeah, so on page 33, it says pest and disease control is managed by developing the farm as a total organism. However, Biodynamic practitioners may make use of specific products for weed and pest control, which they make from the weeds and pests themselves. So that is pretty explicitly uh, the homeopathic shit, right? That you, uh, again, like cures like, this idea that you take part of the disease and then that allows you to cure the disease or whatever. Uh, so they are taking part of the, the disease, the disease in this case being the pest, part of the mouse, and then curing the pest problem by spreading whatever <laughs> it's ridiculous um and then the final thing um even i i guess even less vague than that uh if you go to the uh, appendix section so you'll see under both appendix c permitted materials for plant pests and disease control and uh, appendix d permitted materials for livestock pest and disease control both tables list uh for substances that can be used homeopathic preparations. So uh, there you go, folks. It's uh, it's not quite like the biodynamic preparations where it's like you have to use this if you want to be biodynamic certified. Instead, it's like here are things that you can use. You can see there's other uh, substances, approved substances as well. Lime, light mineral oils, Ayurvedic preparations. I don't <laughs> don't know what that means. Uh, but yeah, so you can do the homeopathic stuff. Uh, it's really no surprise. I, you know, when, when I was searching this before and the USA guidelines, you know, I was looking specifically for like mice and slugs and pest and expecting to see like explicit instructions on like burning or drowning or whatever. Um, it's really no surprise that they don't have that like actually stated. Uh, it's a little bit more vague. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, so again, this is not something that you 
technically have to do for certification, but it is encouraged. So I guess my sentiment is still, still the same. You know, some farmers could be going full on biodynamic crazy shit and, and doing this stuff. Others, maybe not, uh, but who knows? But one thing is for sure. If they want certification, which I'm sure they do because it's a selling point, you want to be able to say biodynamic on your label, just like you want to be able to say organic, right? If they want certification, they have to use the preparations, cow manure and horns and all. For me, that is enough to completely avoid anything labeled biodynamic. But wait, there's more! Now for the worst part of biodynamic farming, livestock. While organic agriculture subsists mostly on the incidental byproducts of animal agriculture, biodynamics not only endorses but requires the use of animal agriculture on site for certification. Uh, according to the Demeter Association, their biodynamic certification guidelines, not having animals on site requires a special exemption. The integration and maintenance of livestock is a valuable tool of biodynamic farm management. Within the context of the farm individuality and ecology, the grower should strive to have a mixed livestock population to help establish and sustain a self-sufficient system of fertility. In situations where the presence of only a small number of livestock is possible, it is recommended that a cow be present in order to provide the manure for making Preparation 500 on the farm. Biodynamics is very clearly at odds with the goals of veganism, uh, aims to perpetuate animal agriculture and slaughter because they need these things to create their magical preparations. And because biodynamic farming uses organic farming certification as a base, it is just as bad when it comes to veterinary care for livestock. Herbal, homeopathic, or anthroposophical treatments are to be given preference. Routine and preventative treatment with allopathic medicine is not allowed except in the case of vaccinations required by law. Legal withholding times are to be doubled in case of required vaccinations. It is strongly recommended to use homeopathic nosodes in place of vaccines whenever possible. So these animals are given placebos and sham treatment instead of real veterinary treatment, veterinary medicine, uh, their only exemptions being the bare legal requirements. That means more animal suffering in perpetuity for as long as biodynamic farming survives. So that is biodynamic farming in a nutshell, although there's a bunch of other crazy stuff that I didn't even touch on. It's pretty amazing. Um, and I didn't even get into the anthro anthroposophy, uh, his philosophies slash alternative medicine kind of stuff, which is incorporated into biodynamic farming. Uh, nor did I really get into Rudolf Steiner himself, other than calling him a racist which he was. Look at these colors, from the Negro to the yellow population found in Asia. From those you have bodies which are once again containers of the most different souls, starting with the totally passive Negro soul, completely devoted to the surroundings, the outer physis, to the passive soul's second level in the different parts of Asia. Bringing this up may just seem like ad hominem and totally irrelevant to biodynamic farming, but you have to understand that Rudolf Steiner is biodynamic farming and anthroposophy, all of his theories, because he gained all of his knowledge via visions. To remove the racial teaching from anthroposophy is no easy task. It is not like removing an isolated tumor, but like removing a tumor with many metastases. What is at stake is the very foundation of the movement, namely the belief in Rudolf Steiner's spirit visions as a source of knowledge. There is no reason to believe in biodynamic farming other than because you believe in Steiner and his visions. And if you believe in his visions regarding biodynamic farming, then you must believe in his visions regarding everything else, including the racist shit. Otherwise, you are just cherry picking the parts that you like. The good news, and where do we draw the line? Luckily, biodynamic uh, farming, it's pretty much just limited to wine, at least at this point. Um, and if you do drink wine, you can probably easily avoid it just by looking at the label. Again, just like organic, biodynamic is a selling point, so they are very likely going to put that prominently on the label. Other than that, I have only seen biodynamic anything uh, twice in stores. Once was on a ridiculously overpriced package of whole wheat pasta at Whole Foods. Um, and just like uh, the grape juice that Freely had, 
it didn't say anything about cow horns or manure or burning mice or anything like that on the package. It was mostly just sounded like organic kind of stuff and new agey kind of stuff. Um, the other example uh, was a on the a box of a Back to the Roots is the brand, Back to the Roots cereal. You might have seen it in that kind of carton container. Um, one of their cereals, I believe only one, uh, says right on the label, biodynamic cinnamon flakes or something like that. But where do we draw the line? You know, for me, biodynamic is completely off limits because it's just by far the worst and it's really easy for me to avoid. And, you know, at least with this really fringe practice, I don't think that we are going out on a limb by kind of wagging our finger at it as vegans, by saying, you know, that this is really something as vegans that we should 100% avoid. Organic, as I mentioned earlier, is a different story. Um, with Whole Foods, it's pretty easy to avoid, but there are some exceptions, tofu being the big one. Um, I used to get non-organic uh, tofu that wasn't labeled non-GMO either, so that was totally great. Uh, I used to get that from a uh, international market that sells like Asian and Hispanic foods, um, and that was the only place I could find anything like that. Otherwise, it was organic tofu, um, or uh, you know, at least it said like the non-GMO certified bullshit. Uh, but then the last time we got it, it was off. It smelled off and it was a little weird. It's like, eh. And we'd had another problem with some a tofu product from that place as well. These kind of uh, pressed strips, I think it was. Open it up. It's totally off. It smelled so disgusting. Uh, so now we actually get our tofu from Sprouts. It's both organic and non-GMO certified. Um, interestingly enough, it is interesting. Interestingly enough, did I say that right? Um, it's actually cheaper. Uh, it is uh, normally $1.20, I think, per 14 ounces, whereas at the international market, the non-organic stuff uh, was like $2 per 16 ounces per pound. Um, and we can get it on sale. When it's on sale, it's 99 cents per block, which is pretty awesome. Then there are the vegan packaged products like mock meats, things like that. Um, not only are virtually all of them non-GMO certified, whatever, uh, but many of them contain some organic ingredients or even all organic ingredients. For instance, the Tofurky Deli slices in my fridge right now contain organic tofu. So while it is certainly possible to avoid organic, it is more difficult and it may require really definitely requires eschewing some really tasty products like tofurkey deli slices and other, you know, mock meats and uh, vegan foods, foods that, you know, maybe you eat that actually help you stay vegan. The important thing to remember is that by focusing on really the simple stuff, avoiding meat, dairy, and eggs, and sticking with conventionally grown products for most of your staple foods and your produce, by doing these things, this is where you're making the biggest difference in terms of animal welfare and environmental impact. I know not all of you will agree with me when it comes to organic, and if you're one of those people and you just really, you just feel the need to pay a premium for, for some crunchy shit, uh, choose veganic if you can find it. I've seen one veganic product, I think a box of cereal in the stores, I think it was at Sprouts. Uh, yeah, there's, there's plenty of bullshit in that too, but uh, at least none of it is animal based, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think veganic is a step in the right direction from organic, whereas biodynamic is very clearly a leap in a very terrible, weird, wrong direction. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have comments or questions, leave those down below. If you want to subscribe, subscribe, and I will have a new video. That's just my new thing now, I guess kind of sad. I think it's kind of a sad way to end a video. It's just like, whatever, I don't care. Maybe that's not a nice way to end a video. I guess I could just stop saying and I'll have a video. I can just say thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> I guess the bye is a little weird. Thanks. Subscribe. You know what I should do? What like every YouTuber does and has been doing since like YouTube was a thing is just having an, an outro, like an actual set, like just a uh, watch my previous video here kind of thing. That would be the, that would be the easiest thing. Uh, I should do that.